I recently launched a personal campaign to try and expose the cheating community as much as possible. This is because, you guessed it, I hate playing against cheaters. Oh shit, Sherlock. And it feels like you're guaranteed at least one cheater in every single game of matchmaking now. As a result of this, I've posted a good few videos showcasing unusual cheating methods that small communities use and get away with because they're nearly impossible to detect and not publicized whatsoever. I also want to make this video because recently YouTube have actually been putting CSGO cheat adverts on my videos, and I'm not too fond of that. Introducing the 7 Euro Vac Killer. In order to tell you the way this device is used to cheat in CSGO, I need to tell you the story behind it. After making this hardware hack video, a man named Tom reached out to me. He told me about a personal project he'd been working on for a very long time, and he wanted to share it with me. First things first, thank you Tom. You are a legend. Exposing yourself and all your hard work for the benefit of others, trying to create a better gaming community for all. Love and respect goes out to you, dude. He told me that all you needed to use this piece of hardware and cheat in CSGO was a second device, like a laptop or PC. So I immediately ran and got my laptop, excited to try out something that very few have access to. He then explained the theory of how this thing worked. The internet connection is essentially shared with the gaming PC and the secondary device. This allows the secondary device to read and analyze the network traffic, allowing display of that information in a useful and cheaty way to the gamer. I asked for a video of the setup in action to verify everything he was talking about was legit and he wasn't just trying to scam me and steal all my skins. The video looked very promising so I immediately went online and bought myself the adapter. Now all that was left was for me to set it up and test it for myself. I followed the guide that he very kindly made and was amazed that actually nothing had to run on the target PC, the CSGO PC, whatsoever. Whoa. Making this, in theory, completely undetectable. Suddenly. When I say I followed the guide, my newbie ass still had a million problems setting it up, so he very kindly troubleshooted all of it for me. I finally got it working. All the network traffic that your PC has secretly, like other player positional data, was displayed for all to see in a nice simple radar format. I was amazed at how seamlessly it all worked. I could quite literally drag and drop the browser generated radar on top of my CSGO screen, replace my actual CSGO radar and have a real time positional data radar of everybody in the game. This not only worked for casual servers, worryingly it worked just fine for competitive servers too. The following is footage of me experimenting with the network hack for the first time, still dumbfounded at how something so simple could be so strong. Hey. You should know. Yeah, I should know. <laughs> They're both there, actually. They're right there. Yeah. It's a bit easier on the laptop. One's going long. It's long. <laughs> That's ridiculous, isn't it? And you can just share it with your friends. Yeah, like exactly. Your browser. Team speak or anything. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> That's so dumb. You can also see other features built in, like this bomb timer at the top of the radar and there are further options like player name. Tom's main goal was for Valve to fix this. Uh, no. But he had some theories why they haven't and why they won't. No! I asked Tom if he'd like a short little interview about his project and how to patch it. He very kindly said yes, so let's get into it. Hello. Hey there. Yeah, nice to talk to you. Hey, yo, yo. Thank you very much yeah. for messaging me about this project because it's super interesting. Yeah, sure. Um, I think there should be awareness of this problem. Definitely. And, yeah. I'd love you to explain in your own words just like a brief overview of the concept of it and how it works. Yeah, the game server sent you a lot of information over the internet. And yeah, even if they are not needed, you get the data. And my software is just looking at the bits and bytes that are sent over the Ethernet cable and interpreting this into a map. A few Overwatch cases ago, you showed a tool called Wireshark. Correct. Which can also read out the network traffic, yeah. but of course cannot interpret the CSGO protocol. In my tool bits on top of the same library that Wireshark is also using. Just taking the network traffic and interpreting this into a map. When did you first discover the ability to exploit the network traffic in the Cisco packets in this way. Yeah, the core idea of a map radar um, was back in 2016 when I was using a kernel level driver to actually read out the memory and in hindsight that was probably totally overkill. <laughs> I always had a favor for network communication and analysis. For example, I contributed a lot to different private server projects that are projects that try to emulate the behavior of game servers, most of the time MMORPGs. 
where these skills are really needed. I always wondered if this would be possible for CSGO. I just developed this for fun and hope and see how far it will come. <laughs> At the end, I was really surprised how well it's actually working. Purely a fun project. Yeah, it works insanely well. Yeah, yeah. How long? did the project take you to create? If you've been aware of the kind of vulnerability since, what, 2016 or so? Like, when did you start working on your personal project and how long did it take to finally conceptualize and finish? Yeah, the now called project was roughly started. Yeah, I quickly checked the commit history. The first commit on the now called project was made roughly one and a half years ago. We really made a lot of progress. It's really like archaeology where you dig into the, the packages and find a lot of more interesting stuff. Year and a half to make this thing. And most of the time was actually just an interface or what you see, the map, yeah, yeah, yeah. login, API UI, server. And not the actual uh, yeah, yeah. decryption. That's actually just a protocol like any other game protocol. The source game engine is actually open source. So that helped me a lot during the development since the source SDK is free available for everyone okay. and CSGO is using part of it. There was a big base code leak, wasn't there, of CSGO? So you did everything just from the, the open source SDK then? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so, so I, I don't even use the, the leaked <laughs> code. I'm, I just don't believe I, it. I use the public information. Are there any no. <laughs> other projects out there that you know of that are similar to yours, kind of using the same um, packet capture methods. So there are certainly network hacks out there, but as far as my research goes, none of these hacks are currently public. I guess um, they've just monetized all the other projects and kept them fairly underground. Yeah, I think so. So the underground market is probably really big, but yeah, but we the public see. market. Yeah, I'm I'm probably the only one who who publicized it. Have you yourself been using it in matchmaking? And if so. What rank did you start at? What rank are you now? Well, I certainly had to test it since yeah, I was developing it. And I started at G DMG and now I'm global, I guess. <laughs> yeah, global. from DMG to global, nice. Yeah, just a way to hack. You, of course, need some skill to actually aim since of you course. just get the information where yeah, people are coming from. There. This question wasn't actually on my list, but it just came to my head. Just in matchmaking in general, at global elite level, uh, it's like 50% of, of the people in the game are cheating. Do you have any idea about the statistics of people cheating in global? Because now that you're obviously in global and you've got a radar hack, it might be easier to identify other cheaters. This was actually funny in, on cash. We, we can actually see the enemy team and when we are rushing on a spot and all the enemy team is also rushing on this spot uh, without checking that the a spot, for example, is free and we are rushing the enemy team is acting like they have some kind of radar hack. 50% of the games, or maybe even more, have hackers in them. That's and crazy. if there is a real hacker in the enemy team, I cannot fight him. So, yeah, obviously. With, I if don't have an aimbot, yeah. I just have a radar hack, can outmove him, but I cannot out aim him. Yeah. The ability, kind of, or slash feature of your hack to basically view it in a browser and be able to share it via a link between you know all your friends or your whole team that's that's a new concept to me i've not really seen that the idea of cheating for me has always been quite an individual concept you know you, you load up your exe quite old school in that sense you just like inject it and then you're just cheating on your own and, and you're not really telling your teammates that you're cheating whereas your hack has a feature in that basically enables the entire team to cheat when only one person is cheating. Is this a feature that you developed yourself or is this one that you've seen in other cheats and borrowed? Well, I'm actually not in the cheating scene, so... Okay, um, not in the cheating scene. Yeah, I, I just invented it by myself. <laughs> you couldn't have borrowed the features because you're not even in that scene. No informations are out there, so I had to invent it by myself. Why did you decide not to sell it? Because obviously they're being sold in a private scene already. It took you a year and a half of, of love and labor to create. Why did you not want to monetize that? Oh my God, I get this question by my friends a lot. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's currently completely free and the server costs are just a few dollars a month, the free time, spare time projects. I don't know if I really want to sell this tool. I mean, these network hacks, as you said, are 
probably already out there in the underground market. Mm -hmm. And I really just want to create awareness of the poor visibility detection of Rift's site. I can reason. give you you came to me and messaged me because you value awareness and you value the the, the heart and soul of the game over trying to make money yeah. off it. What I don't know is what Valve could do to fix this. You personally said that there are other leagues like ESEA and Faceit that have active plugins on their server in order to combat this kind of method of, of packet sniffing detection that way. So it's basically completely not usable on those leagues, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh, correctly. Okay, nice. But it is obviously fully usable on matchmaking. <laughs> so yeah. what could Valve this do? This is the sad part. Uh, to fix this, um, yeah. I don't know, I strongly recommend Valve to implement a better visibility detection so that only players that you can see or nearly see are sent to you. Um, I'm probably exposing Valve by this, but I think <laughs> the real reason why Valve does not have this feature because it's too expensive for them to calculate. Really? And they are still using 64 tick servers. Yep. And if they would increase the tick count or create a better visibility detection, they would need to spend a lot more money on server hardware. Be a good solution, I don't know, would be to create some kind of Prime Plus access to 128 tick servers mm -hmm. and a much better visibility Like some kind of cost service. We're subscription based. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Just like a service for people who actually care <laughs> about the game and want a nice clean game. Then we are Still in the normal leagues like ESEA and Faceit, where you also have to probably pay the providers for a sheet free experience. I am also tracking sounds like if you are jumping and you are not near, um, you may get detected by the radar. But if you are not near, you actually are not exactly sent to the server. I am tracking footsteps, drums, shooting sounds, throwing sounds, maybe like something like that. This is all gathered at the map. Have, have you got anything else? Maybe the like detection. To, the detection. I thought it was just, un, I wasn't even going to go there because I thought it was just undetectable. Yeah, that would also be my answer. So <laughs> I guess there will never be a way to detect. Exactly, because it's just scanning network traffic, isn't it? You're not running anything yeah, I mean, on the target yeah. PC. You're not interacting with the game in any way whatsoever. Am I correct in thinking it's basically undetectable? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I knew it. Uh, but there are certainly ways to render a map hack useless like we discussed with plugins. Well, thank you very much for this interview and thank you very much for contacting me. I really, really appreciate it. I mean, the fact that you spent a year and a half of uh, your love on this project and now you're trying to expose it to get it fixed, which would essentially render all your work useless is uh, crazy. And you're just trying to do it for the greater good, so mad respect to you. Yeah, nice to talk to you about this. Um, we can only hope that Valve fixes this, and my hours of programming may not weigh that much, since I also learned a lot during the development. Thank you very much for your time. Auf Wiedersehen. So in conclusion, he said this was fixable with a plugin, but Valve have never ever incorporated this server-side plugin onto their servers, and people like Faceit, who actually have done this, have unfortunately now disabled it. I want to give a huge shout out to Tom for exposing his method and potentially ruining years worth of work if Valve were to ever patch this. It takes a hell of a lot of balls to watch everything you've worked so hard for go up in flames in order to create a better gaming community. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Hopefully someone from Valve sees this video and finally does something about this exploit. It is patchable, so Valve, get on it. If this cheating method was new to you, make sure to hit that like button. Hopefully that will help spread the video around and maybe get to Valve's attention. The more likes this video gets, I'd say the more likely this is to actually get fixed because it's more in the public eye. The more attention we bring to it, the better. Spread it around with your friends. Thank you everyone so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy guys. Peace.